quick revision video on entropy and free energy. So we'll start with entropy and you can see there it's got the symbol capital S. So what is entropy? It's a measure of the dispersal energy of a system. Basically, the more disordered a system is, the greater its entropy. So if we look at a familiar substance, H2O, and look at the how the entropy changes with temperature, so there's a typical graph of entropy against temperature. So at the very start of the graph, we've got ice, low entropy, lots of order because it's in its regular lattice structure. But you can see that as temperature increases, so does entropy. And that's because the particles are gaining kinetic energy and they can vibrate a bit more than they could before. And then there comes a temperature where the entropy increases and that's obviously taking it from ice to water. So this would be the melting stage. And then we've got liquid H2O now, so water. Again, entropy increasing with temperature, becoming more disordered because the particles can move more randomly. And then a big increase in entropy here. That's obviously the boiling process. And then we get to steam with very, very high level of entropy lots and lots of disorder in the system. So we'll look at some chemical processes now. Here's the first one. So that's ammonium nitrate solid into the aqueous ammonium and nitrate ions. The disorder is increasing because you're going from a solid to aqueous ions, not liquid. That's a common mistake there. So solid to aqueous ions, the entropy is increasing. So delta S, the change in entropy, is positive. Here's another one, so sodium hydrogen carbonate solid plus hydrochloric acid aqueous. And you can see you're going to aqueous and then liquid water and CO2 gas. So we're getting more disorder on the right hand side, on the product side. So again, that's a positive entropy change, disorder is increasing. And the final one, so hydrogen gas plus half a mole of oxygen gas going to liquid water, that's a negative entropy change because the disorder, the greatest amount of disorder is on the reactant side and not the product side. If you have to calculate the entropy change for a reaction, so delta S, we use this equation. So it's a bit like calculating the enthalpy change from enthalpy changes of formation. So delta S is the sum of the entropies of the products minus the sum of the entropies of the reactants. And just remember, if there are numbers in the equation balancing it, so mole numbers, then we would multiply by those, just like in enthalpy changes. And I use this silly way to remember, so the SPA logo, you've got the S for entropy, and then P before our products minus reactants. So Gibbs free energy now, so delta G. So that can tell us whether a process is feasible or not at a given temperature. And a process is feasible at a given temperature if delta G is negative. So how do we calculate it? We use the Gibbs equation, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So we're going to use a familiar process to illustrate this point. So we know that ice doesn't melt at minus 10 degrees C. We're going to use the Gibbs equation to show why not. And you can see there we've got some thermodynamic data. We've got delta H for the melting of ice and the delta S for the melting of ice. Now an important thing to point out is the units of these things. You can see we've got kilojoules in delta H and we've got in delta S we've got joules in there. And the other thing to point out is we've got Kelvin as a temperature. So what I normally do is get everything into kilojoules. So I'm going to divide the delta S by a thousand and the temperature has to go into Kelvin. So you can see I've given that temperature in Celsius. So putting those numbers in, 6.03 can stay as it is, minus 263 is minus 10 Celsius in Kelvin, and 22.1 joules per Kelvin per mole is 0.0221. So putting those numbers in the calculator, we get a delta G of 0.218 kilojoules per mole. Remember, I put the delta S into, into kilojoules. So what's significant about that? Delta G is positive, so ice doesn't melt at minus 10. It's not a feasible process at that temperature. 
So another thing we might be asked to calculate is the temperature at which a process becomes feasible. So again, we're going to use the Gibbs equation, but this time we're going to calculate the temperature that makes delta G zero. So the Gibbs equation would become that. Rearranging, we get T delta S equals delta H. So T is delta H over delta S. So again, bringing the melting of ice process, we know the answer is going to be 0 Celsius or 273 Kelvin. So plugging the numbers in, T is equal to 6.03 over the 0.0221. So that gives us a temperature of that calculator value there in Kelvin. So that's 273 Kelvin, 0 degrees Celsius. So that is the temperature at which this process becomes feasible. So a little graphic there just to show you the link between delta G and feasibility. So the further away from zero on the negative side, processes become more feasible. The closer they get to zero, it's getting less feasible. When it hits zero, it's just feasible. It's just becoming feasible. So anything after zero, in other words, anything positive is not feasible. So we'll finish with limitations of predictions made by delta G. So you've calculated delta G, it's come out as negative. So the process is looking feasible at that temperature, but it's still not going. So what could be the reason for this? The activation energy is too high and stops the process from happening.